when you finish mapping for the day, it's time to take all that new data that you've collected, merge it into your GIS system, and turn it into a map. So here's an outline of how I go about doing that and making sure that all my data is backed up and that I preserve all of the ideas that I generate while I'm mapping in the field and while I'm interpreting the data. I'm Nick Tate and this is another video in the series of Fieldcraft for Geologists. I'm using Trimble Nomads running an old version of Discover Mobile. That's a pretty Neanderthal system by current standards but the principles will be much the same for modern systems. The first job is to transfer the data to the computer. I keep all the data in two folders. N2 because this is Nomad number two. That has all the data layers that I enter data into. And a background folder that has all the background data that I use behind what I'm trying to work on. So all the new data will go into the N2 folder and that has outcrops, field notes, rock samples, soil samples, whatever I'm collecting. So that's the data that needs to be backed up and I just copy that entire folder. And then back on the laptop, I have a backups folder. I'll create a new folder, which is named today's date. written backwards so they sort correctly. And then inside that folder, I'll just paste a copy of that N2 folder to copy all that field data over. So that's backed up and I never touch that data again. So that's my emergency backup in case I make a total mess of the data when I'm working on it. I can always go back to that. And if I'd made a mess sometime before and I didn't realize it, then I have each day back and I can go back to the last one that wasn't messed up. So then I make a copy of that, and that's the one I'll work on. And I put that in my current folder. So I'll delete yesterday's and paste the new copy. So now I can just unplug the Nomad, and that's disconnected it. And I'll put it on charge so that it's ready to go tomorrow. So now I'll start up Map Info. I've got a bunch of workspaces set up that look directly into that current N2 folder. So they're all ready to start editing whatever's in that N2 folder. And since that N2 folder now has the updated data from today's fieldwork, that'll load directly into the workspace. And the first thing I usually do is the structure. So that structure workspace has all the files that I need to draw structure symbols. And you can see a whole lot of new measurements that don't have a structure symbol yet. And then to actually plot symbols, I use another discover utility, replaced utilities, structure symbols. I'm going to process data from a table. I'm going to use my structure in two table that I just updated. Okay, and there it's drawn symbols for all the new structures. And now this little workspace also I use to update the symbols for any old workings that I found, and there's a few old workings in here. So anything that I've labeled as a shaft will come up in this query that I have predefined in the workspace. So I'll just select all the shafts, make that selection layer the editable layer, and for shafts I like to use this symbol with a white fill and 10. Save that workings table, and I'm done. Next job is geology interpretation, and I've got another workspace set up for that one, geolinterp. it is. It's basically my interp layer in the background with all of my field notes labeled with the lithology. And there's the new area I've been working on up there today. And I'll just start editing the 
interp polygons so that they fit my new field notes. So basically I'll just extend some of the old polygons and draw a few new ones, give them the right colour and then clip them off against each other and interp the veins between the old workings. And I've got another workspace set up for alteration and that's basically like the geology one but I've got the alteration facies, the strength of the facies and a comment on the label for each field note. In this case I actually walked around a couple of outcrops with particularly strong alteration so I'll just clone those polygons and for the areas that are a bit more subtle I'll just draw an interp polygon. And then I'll also check the interpretations against any satellite image data that I've got and against any geophysics to make sure that the interpretations are all consistent. So here's how a typical mapping job proceeds. I start with previous mapping as a base and modify it progressively with new data each day. So when you finish doing all the editing and interpretation and cleanup of the data, it's time to make a map. First thing I'll do is open up a generalized legend that I use. And that's compiled from all the work I've done so far on this project. And I'll just delete the bits that I don't need. So now I'll open up my interp geology layer. Faults, veins, and embedding trend lines. There we have it. And now I also want some other things like tracks and workings and those kind of things, and they're in different folders. And I also want those alteration interp files, and I also want tracks, which I keep in my background folder. I'll just make the map roughly the shape I want. Now when you've got it laid out how you want it, the best strategy is to save a copy of all of those files and an associated workspace in a separate folder. So that map stays exactly as it was on that day. And you can go back to it and re-edit it if you need to change something. And it isn't changed by whatever new data that you bring in each day. And fortunately, Discover has a really good tool to do that. It's called table utilities, save tables and workspace and I have a special folder for all my daily maps and I'll create a new one and then I'll just call it workspace something similar. It saves a copy of all those tables and you close everything and then Open that workspace you just created. And now you're working on a copy of all those files. Next thing to do is to make a grid. Discover has a good grid making tool, but it always makes way too many grid lines. And MapInfo always makes text for the visually impaired. So I'll just make that a much more sensible size. Next thing to do is just delete anything off the legend that you're not using. Put the window roughly where I want it to be. So now I need to make a layout window so I can arrange these things and size them appropriately. F5, and I want frames for all the windows that are currently open. And I want to see it zoom to the right size, so you just right click, view entire layout. And one thing that you must always do in any map is tell people what that grid is. Grid is energy A94 zone 54. Put it up there somewhere so that people know that's what the grid is. And now when I'm happy with all that, I save any files that are changed, which is the legend. Last thing to do is to save the workspace. Save the workspace over the top of the original copy we created. 
and we're done. So that map will be the first figure in my daily report. In another video I'll describe the most efficient way to export maps and photographs and get them into a Word document. Before I go back out into the field I like to pick off any targets that I can see on satellite imagery or geophysics so that I can go and see what they look like on the ground. I'll draw a rough target around that thing there and make a note for myself that it's a patch of orange soil so that I can see what that is on the ground. These other ones are mag anomalies that I've picked off the geophysics images. So that means I don't have to carry the big satellite images and geophysics images in my mobile computer. It works much faster and I can quickly identify where I need to go in the field. Each day I also make an off-site backup of all my field and interpretive data. Just in case the field camp burns down or the computers get fried by a lightning strike. I use a cloud service called Files Anywhere or the client's corporate servers, depending on the job. Those data tables are tiny by modern standards, so the backup usually only takes a few minutes, even with crappy internet. But a few minutes is a long time in a YouTube video, so I've accelerated all the progress bars here to reduce the boredom factor. So then the client can access the current field data, the backups, the interpretation layers, the maps I've generated, any new photos, and the daily reports, all from a remote server. Now I need to get those targets and all the updated data tables back into the Nomad. And here's where the trouble starts. As I said, copying the files back from the computer back to the Nomad often has a hiccup. There's a few ways to minimise those hiccups, and the first one is shut down MapInfo. If MapInfo is trying to access the files while you're trying to copy them, it will fail. We'll try it with that and see what happens. So now the N2 folder in the current folder with its updated information, we'll copy it. And here's the N2 folder on the Nomad. I'll delete that. And then I'll paste the updated one. The copy down to the Nomad takes a lot longer than the upload, so I'll speed it up here for convenience. All right, that went okay amazingly. And the other thing I'll do is copy all the interpreted layers into my background folder. So I'll go back to the interp folder over here where I keep all my interpretive layers, copy all of those back to the Nomad and paste them into my background folder and copy and replace them all. And this time it's worked. So now I'm ready to go out and start mapping. I'll be working on a clean set of data tables with up-to-date interpretations in the background and that helps me to focus on areas that are critical for the job at hand and fill any gaps in my previous work. And I also know that all the data is backed up so that even if I have a complete disaster, I'll never lose more than one day of field work. That was the summary version for YouTube. If you found that useful and you'd like some more detail, then go to the link that should be up in that corner somewhere. And for the price of well, a decent hand lens, you'll get the full version of this video, all the other videos in the Fieldcraft series, and anything else that I shoot as I find interesting things in the field.